On March 1, 1872, President Ulysses S. Grant signed the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act, establishing Yellowstone as the country's first national park, and setting in motion a chain of events that has since resulted in the creation of 62 other parks, a national park service to oversee them, and hundreds of other national monuments, preserves, recreation areas, wild and scenic rivers, historic parks, seashores, lakeshores, and so on. Other entities like the U.S. Forest Service oversee national forests, and at the state level, over 6,000 locations have been designated to be state parks throughout the country. While not national parks, they also serve to protect public lands and are typically drawn from when presidents select new locations to designate as national parks. The world's second oldest national park, after Mongolia's Bogdhan Ul National Park, it helped spark a trend of national park creation around the world, and today around a hundred different countries have created their own national parks. Grant could hardly have picked a better location than Yellowstone to start what became nicknamed America's Best Idea. Yellowstone is consistently among the most visited national parks in the country, even more impressive considering it sits hundreds of miles from the nearest major city. It's arguably one of, if not the most iconic national park in the country, and one of just eight that has also been designated a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve and World Heritage Site, and by area it's the second largest park in the lower 48. Its geysers and springs, bison and bears, lakes, mountains, and canyons have made it one of the most well-known natural wonders in the country. In this series, I'll explore the national parks of the United States, in chronological order by the date they were established. Hello and welcome to That is Interesting. I'm your host Carter. This is the National Parks Explored, Episode 1, Yellowstone. This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, the best place to find and watch documentaries about science, history, technology, nature, travel, and so much more. CuriosityStream has exclusive award-winning films and shows that you can't watch anywhere else. Plus, the deepest collection of the best documentaries from around the world deeper than any other streaming service out there. CuriosityStream adds new shows every week and is one of the very best deals in streaming. I actually personally use CuriosityStream well before the sponsorship. I'm a big fan of documentaries, that's why I enjoy making long form content on YouTube, and if you enjoy this channel, I know you'll love the kind of films that are available on CuriosityStream. You can find high quality documentaries on geography, culture, history, or any topics that interest you, such as science, technology, or music, and it's much more affordable than other streaming services. I'm currently enjoying a new series they released called Bridging the Expanse. I'm originally from a city with hundreds of bridges, and I've always been fascinated by these architectural marvels. This series explores the history and engineering behind some of the world's most spectacular bridges. If you enjoy my channel, I know you'll love this and any of the shows CuriosityStream has to offer. Even better, you can watch it on any of your devices, whether it's your laptop, TV, or mobile phone. Go to curiositystream.com TII or scan the QR code for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And for my fans, use promo code TII and you'll save 25% off. It's already one of the most affordable and best deals in streaming. So click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash TII and save 25% right now. Because there can sometimes be some confusion, the National Park Service administers hundreds of units, but only 63 are actually considered national parks. When I use the term in this video, I'm referring to these 63, not everything in the entire National Park Service system. Taking up 2.2 million acres of land, Yellowstone is the 8th largest national park in the country, and the 2nd largest in the continental US, after just Death Valley. It's also the 7th most visited park in the United States, receiving 3.29 million visitors in 2022. Because of this, it can be a pretty touristy park and can unfortunately get really crowded at some of the more popular locations. There have also been a number of incidents of tourists getting way too close to wildlife and putting themselves and the animals in danger. However, it's also a huge park and so there are plenty of areas that aren't just filled with people. Along with Death Valley and the Great Smoky Mountains, it's one of only three national parks in the country that's shared between multiple states, and the only one shared between three states. The vast majority of the park, 96%, is in Wyoming, 3% is in Montana, and the remaining 1% in Idaho. It occupies the northwestern corner of the square-shaped Wyoming, and its boundaries stretch roughly two miles into Montana and Idaho in most sections. Another national park, Grand Teton, sits just three miles south of Yellowstone. It's only an eight-minute drive between the two parks. 
Because of the area's natural beauty and recreational opportunities, northwestern Wyoming has been a popular destination for those moving to the state. In fact, Teton County, which includes both parks, has been the fastest growing county in Wyoming over the last decade. The nearby valley of Jackson Hole has been a particularly popular destination. Many of those moving to the region or buying second homes there have been quite wealthy, and it has the second highest per capita personal income of any county in the United States after only Manhattan, something you might not expect for such a remote and rural area. It's pretty far from any major city. Boise, Idaho is around a five and a half hour drive away. Salt Lake City, Utah is around six hours and Denver, Colorado around eight and a half. Smaller cities though, like Jackson and Cody in Wyoming, Idaho Falls in Idaho, and Bozeman in Montana, are all within one to two hours from the park. Interstates 15 and 90 each come fairly close to the park if you're planning a road trip. If you want to fly in, there's Yellowstone Airport just outside the park in West Yellowstone, Montana, Yellowstone Regional Airport in Cody, Wyoming, and Jackson Hole Airport, which is actually within the boundaries of Grand Teton. For longer flights, there's an international airport nearby outside of Bozeman, Montana, the Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. The park spans the continental divide between the drainages of the Atlantic and Pacific. The Gallatin and Madison Rivers, which flow together along with the Jefferson, form the country's longest river, the Missouri River, in Three Forks, Montana. Both have their headwaters within the park. On the other side of the continental divide, the Snake River, the Columbia River's largest tributary, has its beginnings in Yellowstone as well. Within the park, though, the most prominent river is the one from which it gets its name, the Yellowstone River. It begins in the park and flows throughout much of Montana, as well as a small portion of North Dakota before becoming the Missouri's first major tributary. Within the park, it feeds Yellowstone Lake, the 28th largest natural lake in the country, and one of Yellowstone's most prominent natural features, as well as forms the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, a spectacular canyon home to two waterfalls, the lower of which is the largest waterfall in the Rockies. The yellow cliff faces of the canyon are what gave the river and later the park its name. Interestingly, there's a creek on the Continental Divide called Two Ocean Creek, which splits in two and flows down both sides of the Continental Divide, to the Pacific and the Gulf of Mexico. If you want to learn more, I have a video up about it. Yellowstone, though, is most famous for its geysers and hot springs, formed by water being heated by magma deep beneath the surface of the Earth. Of all the geysers in the world, half are located right within Yellowstone, including the tallest in the world, the Steamboat Geyser, which launches water over 300 feet or 91 meters into the air. Arguably the world's most famous geyser though is Old Faithful. Though not as tall as Steamboat, it is much more consistent, erupting about every two hours. Other geysers on the other hand can be pretty inconsistent, with the Steamboat Geyser once going a period of 50 years without a single eruption. This means that if you visit the park, you'll definitely be able to see Old Faithful erupt. It's also home to the Grand Prismatic Spring, one of the most visually stunning bodies of water in the world. This boiling spring is the third largest on the planet and looks almost like a multicolored eye, a striking blue in the center that becomes green and then yellow around the edges, with streaks of orange and red flowing out of it. Microbes which fill the spring have caused the formation of its multicolored palette. It's home to plenty of other springs as well, like the iconic Mammoth Hot Springs. All in all, there are over 10,000 different springs, geysers, fumaroles, which are when gas and vapor vents out from holes in the earth, and mud pots, essentially hot springs with boiling mud instead of water, in the park. And they all exist because Yellowstone is more than just a scenic stretch of the Rockies. It's one of the largest volcanoes on earth. While it might seem obvious that the many geysers and springs which fill the park are the result of volcanic activity, the exact nature of the volcano eluded people for centuries, largely because Yellowstone doesn't look at all like a volcano. We typically think of a volcano as a mountain peak with a large crater, called a caldera, at the top, formed by past eruptions. But there isn't anything like that at Yellowstone. In the 1960s, a USGS geologist named Bob Christensen was trying to figure out why that was. With all the springs and geysers, clear indicators of volcanic activity around the park, there should have been a volcano somewhere nearby. Probably a pretty large one too, considering how much geothermal activity exists at Yellowstone. But Christensen couldn't find a caldera, the crater of a volcano, anywhere inside the park. That's when he made a shocking realization. He couldn't find the caldera because he was inside it. Researchers at Yellowstone had been looking for craters on a similar scale to those of other volcanoes. Mount Vesuvius, for example, which destroyed Pompeii. Its crater is about 2,000 feet across. 
Some can be larger. Mount St. Helens, which famously erupted in 1980, has a crater about two miles across. Mount Mazama, which formed Crater Lake in one of the largest eruptions in the last few thousand years, has a caldera about six miles across. The Yellowstone volcano, on the other hand, has a caldera 50 miles or 80 kilometers in length, a similar distance from New York City to Philadelphia, taking up nearly half of the park's area. It was so large that people hadn't realized it was a caldera. On top of that, much of the caldera had been filled in by later lava flows, so it didn't look like a crater at all. It's formed by a massive hotspot, an enormous plume of extra hot magma in the Earth's mantle. The hotspot has actually moved over time, all the way from Nevada and Oregon. Much of Idaho's Snake River Plain is filled with volcanic remnants of the hotspot's time there, such as the Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve. Past eruptions of the Yellowstone volcano are thought to have been among the largest that we know of in the Earth's geologic history, and because of that, it's classified as a supervolcano, one of just 12 on the planet. Volcanic eruptions are measured on a scale called the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, and the Yellowstone volcano is just one of 47 sites to have had a VEI magnitude of 8, the highest magnitude there is. Of course, many of these are no longer still active, but Yellowstone is. Because of the scale of this enormous volcano, an eruption could be what's considered an extinction-level event, large enough to cause a mass extinction of many different species, not just from the explosive nature of the eruption itself, but from the weight of the ash, which would be heavy enough to crush buildings, and the possibility that the ash could block out the sun and cause a new ice age. However, it's considered unlikely to erupt anytime soon. Yellowstone is also home to plenty of spectacular wildlife, including black bears and grizzly bears. Most famous are the park's bison. It's home to one of the largest herds of bison in the country, with around five to 6,000 bison, a huge proportion of the approximately 30,000 that still roam in the wild in North America. And it's one of the largest areas where bison, millions of which roamed all the way from Alaska to Mexico to Pennsylvania, still live in the wild. A fascinating story is that of the gray wolf. By the 1920s, gray wolves were fully hunted out of the park, and populations of the elk they hunted boomed as a result. The huge increase in elk was a major upset to the park's ecosystem. They overgrazed, and other species which depended on the trees and plants of Yellowstone for their habitat and food, such as birds and beavers, came under threat. In a move that's been at times controversial as nearby livestock has been threatened, gray wolves were reintroduced in 1995. Since then, it's been largely successful. Elk populations have been kept in check, and the park's ecosystem has returned to how it was before. In 2009, the gray wolf was removed from the endangered species list. The park has a long human history as well. Native people like the Tukudika have called it home for thousands of years, and it was an important location for many other tribes. An unfortunate and often overlooked part of some of the country's earliest national parks were their often intentional role as a means to forcibly remove the native people whose homelands existed there. The Lewis and Clark expedition passed close by, and a member of the expedition named John Coulter visited Yellowstone a few years later. However, it was an expedition in 1870, known as the Washburn Expedition, which really set in motion the process of Yellowstone becoming a park. Supposedly, a discussion around a campfire by the awestruck members of the expedition was where the idea to preserve the land as a park was first proposed, and members came back with paintings, photographs, and stories which they shared with Congress in a push to create a park. National reservations like Hot Springs in Arkansas existed, as did state parks like Yosemite. Because Yellowstone was split between three different states, it didn't make sense to make it a state park, and so in 1872, Congress passed a bill making it the country's first national park, which President Grant signed into law, the first of many American national parks to come. That's it for this video. I don't want to commit to covering each of the 63 national parks in the country quite yet because I'm still not quite halfway through my series in each of the states, the US explained. But if you guys enjoy the national parks explored, I'll keep making more. Up next, we move west to California's Sequoia National Park. If you've spent time in Sequoia and have anything you want me to include, leave a comment and let me know. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's already joined my Patreon. Through it, you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, early access to maps I create, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, ad free content, and shout outs to my videos. Please be sure to check out the TII store, where you'll be able to purchase all sorts of official That Is Interesting products and merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, embroidered beanies, masks, mugs, embroidered backpacks, laptop stickers and sleeves, and so on. I really appreciate the over 900 of you who have already joined my Discord server. 
If you haven't joined the Discord server yet, it's a great place to continue conversations about the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information and suggestions for future videos. It's a great community, and we do fun stuff like geography game nights, live podcasts, and so on. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.